Hello and welcome to this new episode of All About Light tutorial series. I received a lot of requests. Please do an interior lighting tutorial. And here it is. Okay. So I want to lit with you together this interior scene and I show you tips and tricks and workflow that I use to lit up a scene like this. In this specific scene, I do not use an HRI. I just use additional lights to lit up the scene and to focus the highlights and the spots right there where I want to. So this is how the scene looks like in the wireframe shaded mode. And as you can see, I have a lot of lights there, right? I have five to six lights just for this scene. Okay. And all additional lights and just one direct light that's representing the sun. So what I do now is I delete all the lights and let's get started with a blank scene. All right. Welcome back. So as you can see, I deleted all the lights and now we starting on the black canvas. The scene is still here, but we have no active light into the scene. When you start up layout, light with layout, you always have two light types already into the scene. And this is the environment light and you have the distance light. I renamed this distance light right away to sunlight. So these two lights are always into a new light with layout scene. Now the distance light is a light that is basically an infinite light. So it's basically mimicking the sunlight. Okay. And this is position independent. So wherever the light is, it doesn't matter where the light is. When you start to rotate this guy, we can see that it's affecting the scene, right? as it basically would be placed on the window and shine through the window. So it doesn't matter where the slide is, it's position independent. Okay. But I like to position the lights on the corresponding place. So it gives me a bit, a better feeling on where the light actually is. Okay. So I position the sunlight and I want to have a first guideline for the audience to look at. Okay. So I want to have a nice highlight here on the corner of the wall to support this frames right there. And I also want to have a highlight here to support this detail here in the back. So this is a good position of this sunlight. The environment light, I actually leave it as default, how it comes in, right? It has this, um, use global blue sky tint that brings in a little bit of light into the scene. But as you can see that it's not enough light that comes into the scene, right? So now how we can bring in light into the scene? Well, we can increase the environment light power. So I can do that, right? I can just increase this drastically. So the outside is now blown away. Okay. It brings in a little bit more light into the scene, but it, it's still not enough. So this increasing the environment light power is not the right way to go. So how we can bring in light into the scene? Well, the answer is quite simple. Just adding another additional light. And I use a, a real light for that. So let's call this window light. And I position this light right where the window is. Right there. Let's use the numeric panel here. And then I position this light right where the window is. Right there. 
and I increase this power to let's say about 10 for now. And when I start the BPR now, you can see a big difference. You can see that now we have much more light into the scene and it's creating this nice balance between shadow areas and the light areas. Okay. And this right away looks much more pleasing than before. Okay. So we can bring a little bit more. Let's increase this to 15. And now it starts to really bringing life into the scene. And now we're looking closer to some spots that can be improved. Okay, so the first spot that comes in my eye is this dark spot down here. Okay, and also here on this lamp, as you can see it's peach black, right? And also here under the table is peach black, right? Um, and here the apple bowl is lit up nicely, but as you can see down here, it's completely gone. Okay, so these are the spots that we want to address now. So the first thing is I want to address this dark spot under this table and for this chair. So I turn off the VPR and what I do next, I create another area light and call this dark spot or dark dark light and I position this dark light right under the table and raise it up and maybe just move it a little bit here now let's fire up the PPR again and now we can see that it's lifting up this inside of the table and this light up this part there but this is way too bright okay because under the table you have the shadow so now what I do is I decrease the power of this thing to about 0 0.2 and as you can see now the black spot is gone but we still have this shadow underneath the table right the next part that I want to address is this contour of the chair and maybe the contour of the table and of this lamp okay so again i create a new area light i work the most with area lights the light types that i use is area light spotlight direct lights and environment lights in base of hris and i also use photometric lights i show you this later in this uh in this episode okay so this light i call it call it rim light it's okay and i position this rim light right there let's start the vpr and now you can see that this rim light affects my light here as you can see it's not any longer peach black and it's affecting the table and it's affecting the contour of the chairs the next spots are the apple bowl so i stop the vpr again what i do is i create another real light and i call this apple apple light okay and I position this light exactly where the apples are. And now I'm going to the properties because I don't want that this light lights up everything and the scene gets brighter and brighter. I want to isolate this light to just lit up the apple bowl. So how I can do that? In the light properties, there is an object tab. So what I do here is I select everything. And with this set exclude, I click and it's excluding everything. But I want to include the apple bowl. 
Okay, so I activate just the apple ball. And now this light affects only this ball and nothing else. When I start the VPR again, we can see that this light now affects just this apple ball. So now you can see that just with placing this additional lights, we're getting more and more light into the scene, but we don't affect the overall brightness because we focus the lights to just focus on the specific part of the image, right? The last spot. And this is this light here in the lamp. I told you before, there is a light type called photometric light. Photometric light are special lights because it allows you to load in the real light IES light profiles. So in this scene, I used the IES Spotlight Direct and it gives me this nice fall off here, right? It's really acting like a real light because it comes on with the light profile, with the real light profile, okay? So you can go to the search engines and type in IES light profiles and you will find a bunch of them, a, a lot of libraries. Some of them are costly and some of them are free. Uh, I use the free package because the free package comes up with about more than 60 ILS profiles, which is more than enough. So this is the light profile and I increase this value just a little bit to just start to lit up this nice, delicious plate, right? So to drive the focus a little bit more on this spot. So now the outside here will be replaced and later on in Photoshop with a nice outside scene, right? Maybe some, some other buildings or a tree or a garden or whatever, right? And to isolate all these parts, you can use the, um, for example, here, the object ID pass, right? So you you can save, you can render out the scene in Lightwave and you render out all these passes that you need, right? The object ID path, diffuse indirect, so this is just the indirect light that comes into the scene. So you can render out all these passes and use it then later on in Photoshop and composite it back into your final image output. So if you are interested in this Photoshop, tutorial where I bring all these passes into Photoshop and just manipulate and change things until the final render. Uh, please let me know in the comments and then I provide you with the Photoshop tutorial. So to render out this scene here is you go to the render tab and go to the render properties. In the buffer section, you select all the buffers that you need, right? I typically use the object ID or custom object IDs, diffuse direct, diffuse indirect, subsurfing direct, indirect, because I have the apple here, which subsurf scattering, the specular direct, indirect, the translucency because of this glass and stuff like that. Right, I bring at most paths out that I need later in Photoshop. Okay, and in the output tab, um, select all layers. We have to activate this, so we have to activate. Otherwise, it would not save. And we and we can select everything, and set a file format that we want to have. I recommend to using PNG formats or TIFF formats, or if you want to go high end, you can um, save as a OpenEXR. OpenEXR files can become really fast, really big because it contains every value 
in the image, right? Um, and you have way more free, and you have way more freedom to 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 work with the values in the post production. In the most cases, a PNG image or a TIFF image is good enough if you want to use it then later on on the web, on a homepage, or stuff like that, right? So before the post production, you save as a PNG, TIFF, or EXR. And after that, you can save it as JPEG, of course, right? Um, no one loads up a open EXR image on a homepage, right? Uh, it will load forever. <laughs> Anyways, so this is uh, my tip uh, trick on that. Um, get the output part. And then of course, uh, the render settings, uh, play around with the settings until you are happy with the render noise free um, and we are happy with the bounces and stuff like that so just change the values and make some test renders before right and try out some different values until you find okay this image looks good it's not much noise it's basically noise free okay that's the render settings and the output path uh, and the last thing is in your camera uh, use the resolution that you want to render out. Um, I will also recommend you to increase the samples for the camera and for all the lights. So it uh, reduces the noise. It took a bit longer to render, but it reduces the noise quite a lot. And the more samples you bring into your scene and the resolution and the camera setup and all that stuff. So your scene looks right on that. And then basically just press F9 and render it out. Okay. And that's it for this part. So I hope you liked this tutorial. It was a bit a longer tutorial, but um, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And if you like tutorials like this, please let me know in the comments. And as always, please like, comment and subscribe. Every feedback, every comment, every thumbs up is really nice. Appreciated. Thanks again and uh, see you next time. And bye everyone.